And I also thought that was very interesting because that meant that Garrett had two ways as the clairvoyant to gain information about Coulson, both through high level security clearance by, uh, by using uh, his security clearance to get access to the files and through Ward who was also very close to Coulson. And also that in hindsight leads to a lot of interesting questions because the Quinn mentions in the episode where he shoots Kai that they have also been looking at them and then point, points at the sedation gun and his assistant even mentions that they'd be getting specs from the clairvoyant on how to create their own weapons based on it. But the sedation gun was specifically something from Coulson's team and it had been created for Ward. So if anyone had given this information to Garrett to give it to them, it would obviously be Ward. So that showed that this wasn't merely just an infiltration within S.H.I.E.L.D., it was also an infiltration within Coulson's team. And I think that that's excellent because things like this foreshadowed very, uh, uh, many episodes before Captain America the Winter Soldier that there indeed was a conspiracy within S.H.I.E.L.D. Obviously this is only made explicit in the episode right before Captain America the Winter Soldier which tied in perfectly into the Hydra infiltration by the way. But, I've, uh, but uh, because of hints like this it felt very natural and it once again makes for a lot better reviewing the second time and I think that that's I, I don't think that's a bad thing I don't think there's something wrong with with a puzzle looking better once it's completed you know the first time that you're building the pieces you don't really know what it's going to be yet something gaining its identity step by step revealing its plot step by step building a mystery building up to a grander story and also something having rewatch value I think is a good thing I don't think something needs to be epic and whoa and fantastic right from the beginning I think people need to have more patience with TV shows that's generally what a TV show is for and this didn't require nearly as much patience as Star Trek Deep Space Nine with its old Dominion War thing and people loved it for that of how serialized it was but this did most episodes turned out to have a purpose in hindsight. Almost all story, story threads turned out to be related in hindsight. So, yeah, it's just the first season needs to be seen as a whole. But they have e even big budget movies have been made only really being that strong as part of a greater series. You know, you had Kill Bill Volumes 1 and 2. Both of those work much better together. The first film really isn't complete without the second one. And obviously that has higher production values and great action and big names, uh, celebrities, but still. Th those are two films that tie together. You often have that with the second and the third chapter in the trilogy, with the Back to the Future Parts 2 and 3, The Matrix Reloaded and Revolutions. And this is a television show. This is supposed to be serialized. And if you want one greater story, then the stories on their own are going to be more low-key in the beginning. That just makes sense. I, I, I just don't see what's wrong with that. I, I really don't. Especially when really the payoff was The Winter Soldier and everything that f came after that. And I especially think it's uh, very strange that people complained so much about the build-up early on because somebody remarked that he thought it was incredibly boring that, you know, we didn't uh, know that Ward was going to infiltrate from the, uh, from the beginning and that there were no clues that actually the clairvoyant was working so was someone working in Side Shield. But again, when that is revealed in the episode just before the Winter Soldier, it feels very natural because, yeah, the clues were right there in front of us. The clairvoyant had all kinds of personal information about Coulson and although that indeed could be because he was actually clairvoyant. As S.H.I.E.L.D. has mentioned, someone like that has had never been uh, found before and although eventually Reyna turns out to be clairvoyant in the second season, that that was a twist of the Inhuman storyline, but not only that, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe there hadn't been any clairvoyants before this. And also, the fact that he would conveniently not be able to see the part where Coulson was resurrected, that was a lot more logical when we found out that Nick Fury had never released that file to the public, which had also been made clear from the beginning, that Nick Fury kept Coulson's resurrection a secret. So really, what Nick Fury kept a secret from S.H.I.E.L.D. that Clairvoyant couldn't see and he could see everything that S.H.I.E.L.D. had information on. So yeah, again, I think that that felt very natural, but it wasn't too obvious that's how some mystery is supposed to work. It's supposed to feel natural once it's revealed, while at the same time not being too obvious. If you make things too obvious to keep the audience interesting, it means that the mystery is too obvious. So I'm just gonna honestly say it here. You guys just weren't smart enough for this show. While well, I am sophisticated and I have a strong taste for the spiritual and you're gonna kill me over this, aren't you? Well, it isn't the first time that an intellectual has been victimized. This reminds me of the times of Galileo. Okay, it's a little bit uh, hypocritical for Catholic to mention that, but come on, I'm going full mo full, pretentious, full pretentious mo- Full pretent- Okay, that really ruins my intellectual rights. I'm, I'm gonna take a break now. I'm, I'm gonna have a beer. And I'm just gonna leave you with with, with this, and uh, I'll I'll be back. So anywho, I needed that. 
I really think that this was an incredibly smart storyline and I think it works a lot better than even things like the Dominion War because it was planned out from the beginning and due to this the story twists well felt not just like ton 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 moments but they felt incredibly natural and I also think it's incredibly interesting just how strongly this film tied into Captain America the Winter Soldier and a lot of critics have taken note of this that it was exceptional just how closely this tied into the Winter Soldier that the episode right before the Winter Soldier uh, 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 takes place exactly before and during the beginning of the Winter Soldier while the episode after it takes place exactly, exactly after it. It's like they actually expected you to see the movie right when it came out in case you wanted to see the episodes right when they came out. It's like the exact takes were relevant and continuity to that degree of a movie coming out during a TV show and the movie being so relevant to the TV show and the TV show being so so essential to building up the movie That's that has never really been attempted before and I do like that critics have taken note of this that this showed just how intertwined these to media these two me media could be and I think that's especially fantastic considering how this is very much based on the comic universe where comics tied into each other all the time and now we have movies tying into each other and having Easter eggs while also having television shows do that and I think that's just fantastic how they basically now have movies and TV shows that are just like the comics because you know as a kid I watched Pokemon I watched the first season I know the movie takes place somewhere at the end of the first season but I don't exactly know where where here I know exactly where the show fits in and they would do the same thing again with Age of Ultron and I think that that's just fantastic and I think it's also fantastic just how much of the show turned out to be relevant later on with how it for example introduced the Kree, how it introduced the conspiracy within S.H.I.E.L.D., the more flawed elements of S.H.I.E.L.D. and you even see elements of Nick Fury's compartmentalization in, in with the whole how Coulson was resurrected, resurrected mystery that tied in perfectly into the Winter Soldier and it's especially fantastic how Nick Fury made two cameos, how Maria Hill Hill makes three cameos in the two seasons and also how, they, uh, how there are a lot of references to the Marvel Cinematic Universe that always feel natural and tie in perfectly. I think that that's even more fantastic and it also shows the effects that the invasion on New York had. All of this makes this feel, world feel very natural, three-dimensional, it makes for a lot of uh, for a lot of realism and it also allows for uh, aspects untouched on in the movies to be touched upon here. And I also think it's fantastic how it ties into the moral aspects that come with being part of a secret agency. Uh, this is kind of t really told from Shield's point of view where they're the good guys and also find it interesting how with the threats of enhanced people and later on in humans, how this is kind of like the X-Men series told from the point of view of the government. It's very difficult to make the government the good guys and I like how a shield does make mistakes and you can see that it's not a perfect organization like the government really is which also is why Hydrox was capable of taking it over in the first place. And we see how in the Winter Soldier some of Nick Fury's decisions helped Hydra but this delves into that in more detail. And also like how although you know they managed to save Mike Peterson in the first episode later on you know Scorch they actually have to kill him. And I also like that how you know killing your enemies is at first really made it boo kind of avatar the last airbender style but eventually in the second season sky actually does kill blizzard and i think that it's fantastic how also the in the beginning they really act like the good guys in typical tv shows using sedation weapons but eventually when the war with hydra breaks out they actually have to start killing people all of this once again makes the build up to a darker storyline feel more natural it makes the grittiness feel like it really serves a purpose it makes the violence feel like it serves a purpose it makes the more softer elements not feel like they're just there for censorship's sake and all of that works very well i also like how dark the show eventually got and i also think that it has a very strong typical just Whedon sense of humor with a lot of you know meta subtext and in jokes which i think work works very well especially the part where colson steps out of the shadow and he's like i'm sorry i couldn't resist colson's self-awareness and near four of wall breaking jokes are really hilarious and also like how it colson's character is very close to the movies while at the same time showing new sides to them and how the experience of being resurrected really changed him. And on top of that, the Coulson being brought back storyline shows that it wasn't just like, hey, we brought Coulson back. No, they made it something incredibly relevant to tie it into Guardians of the Galaxy. And people have also complained that they didn't like how reliant it was on Marvel Cinematic Universe continuity, but at the same time complaining it didn't have enough of the comics. So, on the one hand, you want this to be very reliant on the source material, but you don't want it to be reliant on the source material with which it actually shares a continuity and universe. Okay. And still, like, if you want to talk about what people want to see, I think that more people have seen Iron Man than that they've read any comics that feature S.H.I.E.L.D. So... 
and the Marvel movies rely upon each other all the time. And they also do have characters like Scorch and Blizzard, and they just also build this up step by step because it slowly got more surreal, more fantastic, more dark. And because it starts off in such a realistic place, it feels more jarring, but at the same time, it's very natural. So it's a very natural growth into something more epic. It eventually becomes incredibly epic. It's very subtle. It is very well planned out. It's very detailed. Most of the storylines serve a purpose. The action serves a purpose. I think that that's the staple of good writing. Just complaining, well, you know, I wanted something more epic. I basically wanted this to start off like how Age of Ultron did. And I think that's a little bit of an unreasonable demand. Especially considering that it has a high number of cameos for a TV show. And I also really like how Agent Jasper Sitwell is in this. That especially satisfied me because he turns out to also be a Hydra trader. And I thought the way that that was handled was also excellent. Because he is of course first featured in the episode that features Agent Hand. And they obviously make her a little bit unlikable and make her approach rather heavy handed. Which was obviously to later on when we suspect somebody is the clairvoyant to make her a possible suspect. And I thought that was very well done because they made her just unlikable enough for it to be believable. But they didn't really make her... That much of a bitch, because yeah, she's kind of hard-handed in her approach, but so was Nick Fury a lot of the time. So was, in fact, Coulson prior to his resurrection ex experience. That's part of working in this government agency. What I thought was very strong about this is that Agent Hand makes a couple of the flaws of keeping secrets from the team and using members as tools that Nick Fury also makes in the movies and, and that shows the environment that S.H.I.E.L.D. created that allowed Hydra to take over. But at the same time, she really does have more principles, which is why the twist of her not turning out to be Hydra didn't feel too much like a seeing moment. I, like a lot of people, unlike Confused Matthew, like the twist in Toy Story 2. This series really reminds me of that, of how, you know, in the end, when we find out who really was behind it all, it feels very much natural and believable and planned out from the beginning. And so I also think, going back to Agent Sitwell, that that was incredibly effective because he also took advantage of Agent Hand's secrecy to send Ward and Fitz uh, into Georgia while there wasn't an escape plan. But what's incredibly interesting was that they were going to send a whole attack force, but there wasn't going to be a, 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 going to be an extraction team for Ward and Fitz. And it had also been planned out from the beginning that Ward wouldn't go with someone like May, who's a threat to him, but with someone inexperienced like Fitz. But what's even more interesting is that Ward reacted totally calmly when it turned out there was no extraction team and he tried to convince Fitz to leave. And that tied into how both Ward and Sitwell would turn out to be traitors, because what was the purpose of all of that? Because we even see that Sitwell is in fact disappointed, and that makes him a lot more unlikable than Hand, although it's done very subtly. He's disappointed when it turns out that Ward and Fitz are rescued. So the question is why? And the question is why was Fitz so totally okay with seemingly being screwed over? The answer is because he could convince Fitz to leave because there wasn't an extraction team. If Fitz would either die or he would uh, at the very least get separated from Ward, and Ward could get out of there with this very special technology that could activate weapons from far away and that could be used for mass destruction, the kind of thing that Hydra likes. He could get away with that and he could say that he either had to destroy it because he couldn't uh, escape with it, that it was destroyed by the enemy, or he could just uh, or he could just say that he lost it, whatever. But he, he could get away with the secretive technology. And this actually shows very subtly how there's a secret link between Ward and Sitwell, even though they don't share that much dialogue together, which this episode seems very mundane and low-key, a typical of, you know, we should trust the system, no, we shouldn't kind of episode at first. But having seen The Winter Soldier and having seen the rest of the first season, this this was excellent. And in fact, Sitwell turning out to be a traitor in The Winter Soldier and actually leaving for the ship he's on in the episode right before The Winter Soldier, that showed just how strong the continuity was in this.